The following worship service was delivered on July 25, 2021. The communion segment is delivered by Jim Jensma, sermon segment by Michael Jones, and song service by Will Spear. The sermon begins a new series on life of Samson and the lessons we can learn from this unusual Bible character with lots of flaws and failures. Today's message specifically looks at Samson's parents and lessons we can learn from godly parents, particularly when they go astray. Also, a brief review of Proverbs 22 6 is included with consideration of whether being a good parent means you'll have good children when they grow up. We do hope that you find this message helpful and useful to you in your spiritual life. You are encouraged to visit the church's webpage at www.followthebible.com, where you may find other messages that will be helpful to you as well. And now, we will go ahead with our message for today. Good morning, church. We'll begin by singing this morning, Holy, Holy, Holy. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to So thanks so much for coming out to be with us here today on our worship service event. So it gives us the opportunity to begin the week with God at the focus of our mind and in our hearts and enables us to tune into his general greatness. So again, thank you so much for being with us. If you are visiting with us today for the first time or you're new to our general community, either by video or here with us at the church campus, we'd sure appreciate it if you would let us know. And you can do that by sending Orange View, texting Orange View to that number on the screen, 94000. And what that will do is it will bounce back some information about our congregation so that you can uh, be introduced to us and allow you to tell us anything about you that you would like to share 
as far as your name and where you're from and any kind of prayer needs that you might have, but you can just give us whatever it is that you're comfortable to give, and that will be just fine. Also, if you would like a print bulletin, you're welcome to receive one of those from me up here. I distribute those during the break. That'll come up a little bit later. But if you're okay with an electronic one, you should have gotten one by email, and you can receive one by texting OV Weekly to that same number, 94000. So please feel free to do that if you'd like to get a copy of that bulletin in an electronic form. Then, as well, we like to get as much uh, information about prayer needs and things like that that we can get. So we have a communication card to get that information from you. And you can go to the congregation's webpage where you can fill that out. Or you can also text OVCOMCARD to that same number and it will bounce it back to you. And that will give you the ability to let us know what kind of prayer issues you might have going on or anything else that you need to communicate back into the church. So if you've got something going on that you could need some assistance with or help with, let us know. If you have a prayer need of some kind, let us know. If you have something that you'd like to offer to other members of the congregation, again, let us know. Now, a little bit later on, we're going to be having our communion service. And when we do that, you're going to need to have one of these. Uh, this is the Lord's Supper communion kit. And they contained the fruit of the vine and the unleavened bread that we'll use. So you should have received one of these when you came in this morning. But if you did not, you'll want to excuse yourself to grab one. So we have some in the back of the auditorium. And we're going to need these here in about 15 minutes or so, maybe 20 minutes down the line. So you'll want to excuse yourself and go grab one of those. Okay. Last thing for me, just as the general intro here is a primary focus of our congregation is to help other people also get to be right with God. So the answer to the question, how do I become a Christian? We want to answer for you if you want to know. And so we have lots of avenues for that. One is you can mention that to any member here. Just tap somebody on the shoulder and say, hey, I'd like to know more about becoming a follower of Christ. And we will certainly help you with that. Another thing that you can do is you can text OV, I'm ready to that same number, 94000. And then what that will do is it'll give you some information about the next steps involved in doing that and let us know who you are so that we can link up together with you and get you all set up and squared away. Then also, at the end of our service today, we have a reception area outside, and I go kind of hang out out there and uh, meet and greet folks as they're coming in or out. And I will be there, and you can come up to me and say, hey, thanks for, uh, for being here with us today. And then you can say, hey, you know, I'd like to know more about becoming a Christian, and we will help you right then. So the process of initially beginning your new life in Christ does conclude with a baptism event, which is an immersion in water. And we have the ability to take care of that right now, right here. And there's no need for anything on your part other than a willing heart, right? So you don't need any changes of clothes or anything. We can get you all squared away and taken care of. But we're going to go ahead and uh, have our opening prayer, and then we'll get back into our song service. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we're thankful to you for your love for us and the, that we have Jesus, that we have him as a perfect sacrifice for us and a perfect example of how we are to live our lives. We pattern ourselves after him. We pray that as we go through this life, we will be good examples for you and for him, and that we'll let our light shine in our community, our light shine in our communities. We know there's a great need. There are many around us that are lost, and they need you. We pray for, for them and our efforts to, to reach them. We know that there's so, so much at stake when it comes to our soul salvation. We thank you for the grace and the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. We pray for those of our, our members that are, that are suffering. We have um, members that are suffering from cancer and, and COVID and various um, ailments. We pray you'd be with them, heal them, that they could uh, renew a, a portion of health that, that would be beneficial to them. We pray for our, our church here. We know that there are many that aren't here today for a variety of reasons. Be with them. Bless them if they're worshiping remotely. And, and bless them uh, with the things that they need for their, their various um, conditions that they're in. We thank you for our leaders. Give them wisdom as they lead us and bless all those that serve here. We know that our country has um, various 
problems and issues now. We pray for our, our leaders because we know we're commanded to do that. We pray that they will look to you for, for wisdom and guidance as they make decisions that affect us. And we pray that those would be good, godly decisions. This is our prayer through Christ's name. Amen. Good morning. We will continue by singing this morning on bended knee. On bended knee I come, with a humble heart I come, bowing down before your holy throne, lifting holy hands to you as I pledge my love anew. I worship you in spirit, I worship you in truth, make my life a holy praise unto you. On bended knee I come, with a broken heart I come. Bowing down before your holy throne As I look upon your face Show your mercy and your grace Change my life, O Holy Spirit Make me fresh and ever new Make my life a holy sacrifice to you. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Precious Savior, still our refuge, take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despite forsake thee? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou wilt find a solace there. Follow me.
I traveled down a lonely road and no one seemed to care. The burden on my weary back had bowed me to despair. I oft complained to Jesus how folks were treating me. And then I heard him say so tenderly. My feet were all so weary upon the Calvary road. The cross became so heavy, I fell beneath the load. Be faithful, weary pilgrim, the morning I can see. Just lift your cross and follow close to me. I Verse 2. I work so hard for Jesus, I often boast and say, I've sacrificed a lot of things to walk the narrow way. I gave up fame and fortune, I'm worth a lot to thee. And then I hear him gently say to me, I left the throne of glory and counted it but loss. My hands were nailed in anger upon a cruel cross. But now we'll make the journey with your hand safe in mine. So lift your cross and follow close to me. O oh, Jesus, if I die upon a foreign field some day, t'would be no more than love demands, no less could I repay. No greater love hath more man than for a friend to die. These are the words he gently spoke to me. If just a cup of water I place within your hand, then just a cup of water is all that I demand. But if by death to living they can thy glory see, I'll take my cross and follow close to thee. The song before the Lord's Supper will be How Deep the Father's Love. <clears throat> How deep the Father's love for us. How vast beyond all Dying breath has 
should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my Through the years, when it comes to Jesus sacrificing his life for the forgiveness of our sins, I've often debated with myself, did Jesus have to die? Was there really no other choice or option? Or did Jesus voluntarily lay down his life as a demonstration of how much he loves us? On one hand, we read the wages of sin is death, and without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. And on the other hand, we can read, greater love hath no man than this, that one lay down his life for his friends, and that God demonstrates his own love towards us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Well, I've come to the conclusion that the answer is yes to both, to both questions. Yes, Christ had to die, essentially taking our place. And yes, he voluntarily laid down his life out of love for us. It's basically, as they say, two sides of the same coin. And we can see this in Jesus' prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane, the night he was betrayed, when he prayed, My Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as thou will. He acknowledges that he obviously doesn't want to die, but that he will if that's what he has to do. And there's plenty of other passages in the Bible that clearly state that he did so out of love for us. So as we partake of this Lord's Supper, let us remember Christ's sacrifice for us. Let's pray for the bread. Our Father in heaven, as we partake of this bread, help us to remember the love your son had for us, has for us, that he was willing to sacrifice his body for us, that we might have the forgiveness of sins. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And let's pray for the fruit of the vine. Our Father in heaven, we again thank you for the blood your son shed for us and the, the life-giving force that it represents and the forgiveness and washing away of our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. the moment we're going to have a brief break we'll have a five minute timer that'll count down for us during this period of time there's a couple different things that go on so let me give you an idea of what to expect so first during this period of time it's very common for the members of our congregation to meet and greet those who might be visiting with us today so don't be surprised if we wander over and say hello and thank you for coming out to be with us We'd also, again, sure appreciate it if you'd let us know that you're here and let us introduce ourselves to you. And you can do that by texting Orange View to that number on the screen, 94000. Now, also during this time, while the timer's going, I'm going to be standing up here in the front. And during this period of time, I will have available print copies of the bulletin if any of you guys would like a print copy. 
Or again, you can get an electronic one by texting OV Weekly to that same 94,000 number. And then another thing I'll be handing out up here in the front are the kids packs. So the kids packs are activity packets that are designed to teach the sermon material to the smaller element of the congregation. Okay, so uh, we're starting a new series today on Samson, character study of Samson. And so the material is directly related to that. So there's crosswords and word finds and coloring and all kinds of cool stuff like that. So you're certainly welcome to come up and retrieve one of these. And then I have a brand new fully stocked uh, toy box to distribute to those kiddos who actually do the activity pack. And you can bring them to me after services and you can dig in the little treasure chest. And then also during this period of time, again, we would just like to remind you that a primary mission of our congregation is to help people become right with God in the first place. So to do that again, you might use this as an opportunity to, to mention that. Hey, I'd like to know more about becoming a Christian. Um, or you can text OV, I'm ready to that 94,000 number, and that'll get you some initial information, get you going, and then we can follow up on that later. But we'll go ahead now and we'll start our timer, and we'll see you all back in five minutes. Thanks a so bunch. Welcome back. Let's all find our seats as we resume in song with Step by Step. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning, and I will learn to walk in your ways. And step by step you'll lead me, and I will follow you all of my days. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. I will seek you. walk in your ways, and step by step you'll lead me, and I will follow you all of my days, and I will follow you all of my days, and I will follow you all of my days, and step by step you'll lead me. And I will follow you all of my days. Our song before the sermon will be, You Are My All in All. There is an extra, Worthy is Your Name, that I accidentally put. So we're just going to ignore that second slide before we get to the parts. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God. Jesus, let my 
tithe, if you would, go ahead and turn in your Bibles over to Judges uh, chapter 13. Now, Judges is one of the Old Testament books, so you have to flip way on back there towards the beginning. But we do start a new study today on the life of Samson and what it is that we can learn from this guy. So taking a look at Judges chapter 13, starting our reading at verse 2, it says, There was a certain man of Zorah of the tribe of the Danites whose name was Manoah. And his wife was barren and had no children. And the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Behold, you are barren and have not born children, but you shall conceive and bear a son. Therefore, be careful and drink no wine or strong drink and eat nothing unclean, for behold, you will conceive and bear a son. And no razor shall come upon his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb, and he shall begin to save Israel from the hand of the Philistines. Okay, let's pray together. Lord, we thank you so much for being our God and allowing us to be your people and the confidence that that gives us from day to day of knowing that you love us and you care for us and you're with us and we never face any of the struggles of life alone. And we pray this morning as we begin our new study in the life of Samson that we would look back at this character who is identified in Hebrews 11 as an object of faith for the lessons that we can learn both to emulate in our own lives as well as to avoid in our life that we might continue to be useful and fruitful for you in all the days of our life. We thank you for your love and care. In Christ's name, amen. So I want to tell you that I recently read about a young married couple who wanted to have a child, and they could not have children. And there was a lot of unrest and upheaval going on in their country. The nation had been fractured. Their prayers continued week after week, and then month after month, and then apparently year after year until they came to the realization that the wife simply could not conceive a child. But then the day came when God opened their womb, and a little tot was conceived, and they gave birth to a son. And this story is recorded for us in Judges, and you will probably recognize not the parents, but you will recognize their son. This little guy grew up to be Samson. And I'll tell you that Samson is a very puzzling Bible character. Because as you look at him, there's some things that he does that are right. And there's a whole bunch of things that he does that are wrong. If you were going to summarize up Samson in one word, it would probably be ego. He always wants to be the center of attention. And what Samson wanted, Samson got. But what we're going to look at in chapter 13 is not so much Samson. We're going to take a look at his parents because they're kind of the focal of Judges 13. We read about the uh, coming of Samson into the world and as is often the case, you kind of stop and reflect on this, that hey, you know, God chose these parents to be the parents of this child who was going to serve a specific role in the plan of God. And so as we take a look at this, we want to take a look at what happens regarding godly parents. In verse 5, we have the guidance that says, You're going to conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his head. He will be a child that will be a Nazarite to God from the womb. It comes from the, the Hebrew word huper, from which we get the English word hippie. No, just kidding, I just made that up. Um, but, but you get the idea here. These people were folks that were truly godly parents. We have godly parents today. They have similar goals for their kids. They want to raise godly little boys and godly little girls to grow up to become godly men and women. They spent time, I'm sure, following the instructions of Scripture. They had a lot of prayer. In fact, you don't even get out of Judges 13 until you see the power of a praying parent. Take a look with me, if you would, down to verse 8. After Manoah... The father learns that they're going to have this child. He immediately responds to the Lord in prayer. It says, then Manoah prayed to the Lord and said, O Lord. Now let's just pause on that for a second. When he says, O Lord, that comes from the Hebrew word Adonai, for real, which means God is ruler. So he starts off his parenting adventure immediately recognizing the primacy of God in that process. And then he says, please let. And that actually is an emphatic it says, like, kind of like right now, 
Please, Lord, please, right now, let the man of God whom you sent to us come again and teach us what we are to do with this child who is to be born. Because we really want to know. Teach us how to do this job. We know, verse 12, he says, that we want to know what manner of life this child will have and what his mission is. Now, you think about that. Godly parents, they've got a little guy on the way, and they start off acknowledging God's role in the parenting process and saying, we'd really like some guidance, we really want some direction, and we want to start on this right now. You know, I know that when we were expecting our first child, I read through, you know, tons of books and stuff, and lots of them were on, like, what to expect when you're expecting and things like that. And I also tried to have a very diligent prayer life about this. Hey, I'm about to become a parent, and I guess this is always an on-the-job training process, but I'd really like the Lord's help and involvement in that as we raise our kids. And so Manoah here does the same. I want to raise a godly child, and I want to make sure I do it right. Now, here's the thing. So how'd that turn out for them? Well, there's more written about Samson than any of the other judges in the book of Judges. And he's a misfit. When you read through his four chapters, you can find that his feats were legendary. There's no question about it. He had unbelievable physical strength. That was also true as well. But he had a couple of great weaknesses. His weaknesses would probably be romance and revenge. And as such, he strayed away from the path that no doubt his parents provided for him. In fact, when you go through Judges chapter 14, you can see where he really, really, really starts to go astray. He starts off by seeing um, that he's got a quest for a particular woman, and he says that, hey, I have found this woman who is of the daughter of the Philistines. Go and get her for me. And as you read through chapter 14, it's just event after event after event of really, really, really bad ideas. He goes to the wrong place, looks for the wrong thing. His parents come to him and said, you know, um, is there not a woman among the daughters of your relatives, an Israelite, among our people that you could get? Do you have to go and take a wife from the uncircumcised Philistines? Remember that the promise from God was that he was going to deliver the people from the Philistines. And now he goes over to get a wife, and his parents kind of tap him on the shoulder and say, that's a really, really, really bad idea. And look at his response to dad. Get her for me, for she is right in my eyes. You know, the Christian equivalence of this is probably 2 Corinthians 6.14. To not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Now that passage has application beyond marriage, but it sure would apply to marriage. And it's definitely going to apply to Samson. Samson starts off with everything really kind of stacked in his favor. Two godly parents, a mission from God, and he goes off track on that and strays pretty seriously, pretty quick. Now, you might be sitting there kind of scratching your chin a little bit saying, isn't there something in the scripture about if we raise kids correctly, they won't turn out to be weird? Well, kind of. That's Proverbs 22.6, kind of. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he'll not depart from it. How does that apply to Samson? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's take a look at that. How does that apply to Samson? Well, first thing I want to tell you is that that is a proverb, okay? It is a proverb and not a promise, okay? On the screen there, that's Hebrews 13, 5. That's a promise. God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That is a promise. Proverbs 22, 6 is a promise is a proverb. And proverbs are different than promises. Okay, What a proverb is, is a general observation that is usually true, but not always. Okay, So proverbs is called the book of proverbs for a reason. It's not called the book of promises, the book of proverbs. And as you read through the proverbs, there are observations about life given by inspiration of God, again, that are generally true, but far from universal. Okay, far from universal. In reality, the righteous are not always honored. In reality, the wicked sometimes do succeed. The diligent can lose it all. The lazy can strike it rich. But those are not the norms. Okay? Um, a gentle word does typically turn away wrath, but not always. 
Okay? The fact that Jesus lived a perfectly righteous life and had enemies who put him to death will show you that Proverbs are generally true, but not always true. It is generally true that if we train up a child in the way that he will go, that when he's old, he won't depart from it. That is generally true, but it is not always true. And by the way, Bible scholars disagree on what Proverbs 22.6 is about anyway. So some Bible scholars look at this and say, well, it relates to the general spiritual training of a child. Others look at it and say, no, what this deals with is nurturing the natural gifts and talent of the child so that as they grow up, they'll be having a fulfilled life. Okay? And then there are others who take a blend of it. So, for example, the uh, Amplified Bible takes a blended view. Here's the way they translate it. They say, train up a child in the way he should go and in keeping with his individual gifts or talents. And when he's old, he won't depart from it. That's the way they view it. But the thing about kids is that kids have this proclivity to not always turn out the way that we would have hoped, even if we've done everything right as a parent. Because parenting matters. It does. It matters. If you're a Jewish parent, you'd be really familiar with Deuteronomy 6. This is where it says, These words that I command you shall be on your heart, and you will teach them diligently to your children. You'll talk to them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up. You will constantly be teaching your kids the standards of God. Jewish parents know that. They're very familiar with that. In fact, even to this day, Jewish parents often, before their beginning meal, will read scripture, give commentary, and then they dine. Even to this day. Jewish parents know that. The standards of God must be taught to their kids. Now that's in the Jewish scriptures. In the Christian scriptures, we read the same. Ephesians 6, 4, fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Parenting matters. Now, it's a difficult task. Um, advice and criticism is easy to give, okay? Doing the job the way it's designed to be done, a little tough. I would like to share with you some simple parenting tips that are really easy to learn, not always easy to implement, but that are accurate and will help kind of tilt things in your favor. The first is to speak biblical principles. In other words, and I mean literally, talk about them. Deuteronomy 6 says, talk to your kids. Ephesians 6 says, talk to your kids. You can't just let them figure it out. You have to actually vocalize what the standard is. Be a good example of the biblical principle. Actually live out in your own life what the standards and precepts of God are. Offer to your children the same patience that God offers you. You're not perfect. God gives you patience as you develop and grow. Be the same towards your own little kiddos. And then don't be overly harsh with your kid. That's the Ephesians 6-4 rule. Don't be overly harsh. Make sure that the discipline fits the offense. So we read through Judges 13, and we think, well, surely Samson's parents followed this. They were godly men and women. They were a godly mom and dad. They started the process with prayer. They gave instructions about picking a wife from the Israelites. Surely they followed all this. But their kids still turned out weird. Why? Why do kids sometimes turn out wayward? Even with parents doing everything right. Okay. Well, here's why. The first one's very easy. Because of the wild card of free will. Children have free will. And I'll tell you, sometimes Christian parents beat themselves up because of the choices that their children make. You, you ought not do that. Okay, your child makes their own choices. Free will is from God. Right? So Gen, uh, Joshua 24. You remember Joshua challenged the people, choose you this day who you will serve. Whether it be God or these pagan gods. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. But you know what? 
you have to make the choice. And your kids won't make that choice. And you don't make it for them. They make the choice, and they're responsible for the choices that they make. Ezekiel reminds us, it's the soul that sins who dies. The parents aren't responsible for their kids' choices. The kids aren't responsible for the parents' choices. The righteousness of the righteous is upon himself. The wickedness of the wicked is upon himself. As a parent, as a parent, we can instill the standard, but we cannot force that standard to be chosen. Or, as I sometimes say, you can influence, but you cannot control. Now, second reason, because parents are not flawless either. We're not perfect. There are no perfect parents. Now, let's pause on that for a second, and let me share this with you. Even if you were a perfect parent, that is no guarantee that your child will turn out great. And by great, I mean submissive to God. If you were the perfect parent, provided the perfect environment, took away everything that would be bad as far as influence, so everything's great in line, your child may still choose to disobey God. And you know how I know that? Because of Genesis 3. God put Adam and Eve in the garden and was effectively their parent. The perfect environment, the perfect parent, and they still sinned against God. But we're not perfect. Romans 3.23 reminds us, as we heard during the Lord's Supper segment, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We're not perfect. We make mistakes. As parents, we make mistakes. I'm sure I've made plenty of mistakes, and I hope that my failings and shortcomings don't get passed along to my kids, but I fear that some of them may. I'll tell you also, it is literally a sign of the times for your children to go astray. That's 2 Timothy 3. Paul told Timothy, understand this, in the last days there will come times of difficulty. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, and, here it is, disobedient to their parents. It's a literal sign of the times. And then also, as I'm sure you're aware, the family is a primary target in the spiritual warfare in which we live. 1 Peter 5 tells us that we're to be sober-minded and watchful because we have an enemy, the devil, who prowls around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. One clear strategy that the adversary has is the destruction of the family. So we come to places like Judges 13, and we, re and we meet Samson's parents, and we see all the hopes and dreams and joys that they had with their child, and they still try to keep their child on the right path when we get over to the next chapter, but their child still kind of ends up going astray a lot. Now, he does come back at the end, but there's a lot of stray along the way. And as Christian parents today, we do some things right, and we probably do some things wrong. But we can always take hope in remembering that Romans 8 says there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We're not perfect, but we are forgiven. You can't control your kiddos, but you can influence them. So we do what we do. We remain prayerful for our kids. We instruct our kids affirmatively. We actually do what God asks us to do. And then we, again, encourage our children to become righteous men and women as they grow and develop as well. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for our time here this morning in the Scripture and the opportunity that we've had to take a look at uh, some parenting principles and see how those play out in real life. And we pray for our parents here within our congregation that you would be with them and provide them with guidance and wisdom as they seek to, to raise godly children of their own. And we pray that your blessings upon them in that quest and then what they do. We pray that as our congregation that we would always support our parents in the same way, that we would equip them as best as we're able that they might fulfill the jobs that you've given to them. We thank you for all of your care and pray you'd continue to be with us throughout our day as well as throughout our week ahead. In Christ's name we pray.
I am resolved no longer to linger, charmed by the world's delight. Things that are higher, things that are nobler, these have allured my sight. I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to thee. I am resolved to go to the Savior, leaving my sin and strife. He is the true one, he is the just one, he hath the words of life. I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to thee. I am resolved to follow the Savior, faithful and true each day. Heed what he saith, do what he willeth, he is the living way. I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to I am resolved to enter the kingdom, leaving the paths of sin. Friends may oppose me, foes may beset me, still will I enter in. I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and I will come to thee. You guys can be seated. So I uh, will tell you that we have one other act of worship that's available to us today before we depart from our assembly, and that is giving. So giving's the uh, act of worship whereby which we show God our gratitude in giving back to Him who gave to us. So the scriptures, of course, tell us that God loves a cheerful giver. And uh, that we certainly want to be that cheerful giver for the Lord. So we have a couple different opportunities or ways in which we can do this. So one way that we can give financially is by texting GIVE to the number on the screen, 714-450-7010. And that will bounce back to you the information or process by which you can give online. Another way that you can do that is to go to the congregation's webpage at followthebible.com, scroll down that page to a big green button down at the bottom that says click here for online giving, and if you click that button, it will also again show you the process by which you can give online. And then if you'd like to give tangibly today, we have the ability to do that too. Each of the exits here from the auditorium have a little box there for collection of contributions, and you can provide your gift there, and that will be just fine. Also, again, another reminder for you that if you are visiting with us today, please let us know. Text Orange View to the number there, 94000. It'll allow us to tell you a little bit more about us, get as much information from you that you're willing to share. We'd be able to send you a note or card, and that would be fantastic. Then, also, again, a primary mission of our congregation is to help other people begin their new life in Christ. So that is a wonderful life, i got to tell you. So every single day I have a tremendous amount of thankfulness that I am in fact a child of God and I would recommend that to anyone so if you'd like to get more information on that you can mention that to any member here you can text OV I'm ready to the 94,000 number we'll get some information to you right away and then also what I'm going to do is when we're all done here is I'm going to go outside to our little, little reception kind of area and I'll be over there and come up and say all right now I'm ready to get more info and then we will do that 
Um, also, just to give you a general closing announcement, I'll tell you that uh, part of uh, Christian living is being uh, generous towards other people. And we do have, just a reminder, some people here within the congregation that have offered to give away some furniture. So if anybody needs that, let them know or let me know. I'll put you two together. And then also somebody today said, hey, you know, I was at the store and found hearing aid batteries, interestingly enough, 90% off. So they went ahead and bought them, and they're available to anyone who might have a need for those. So if you have a need for hearing aid batteries, come see me and say, hey, let's see if that works for me. And if it does, we will give them to you, and you can experience that generosity. That'd be great. But let's go ahead and close in a word of prayer, and we'll be all done for the day. Lord, we thank you so much for the new week that's ahead of us and the opportunities that that's going to provide for us to be salt and light. We pray that we would be open and attentive to opportunities to do good to other people. As we see those opportunities, we pray that we would act on them and do, in fact, do that good, that others might see your love shown through us to them and experience your goodness and greatness in their life too. We thank you for all the blessings that we enjoy in Christ, for the ability to come to you in prayer, to talk with you about the things that weigh on our hearts. And we pray that you would continue to be with us throughout the day that's ahead of us today, as well as the rest of the days and the week ahead, and that we would look to see you working in in our life and that we would, again, look to work for you. We thank you for, again, all of our blessings. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Thank you so much. Have a joyous week.